We're seeing the lowest levels in the S&P 500 in four weeks now. The Nasdaq off by more than 4% as well. So big moves on these indices that we haven't seen since the likes of June. Be not seen these sorts of low levels since a month ago. So in three short days, we really have eradicated an awful lot of what was big crescendoing in buying. Yeah, and I mean, we should talk about this move lower. I mean, a lot of people were basically saying, look, uh, there was some point that we were going to get a correction here. You have the S&P 500 uh, down about 7% from that high that it hit uh, last uh, Wednesday, I believe. But the NASDAQ indices, uh, NASDAQ 100 down 11%. So you've got that correction there. You've got mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Semiconductor down 11%. You've got that correction there. New York Fang Index down 14 And a lot of the individual names, like the Apples, Teslas, et cetera, of course, down massively well uh, past correction territory. Territory, uh, from their all-time highs set uh, in the most recent week. So uh, there are a lot of people that said this was expected. I guess the concern is, uh, does this continue or is mm -hmm. this now the reset where you do start to see people come in tomorrow uh, and start to look uh, around uh, sort of, I guess, the ashes here uh, for some value? And then we have the official headline coming from Bloomberg. Tesla plummets 21%. It's its worst one-day loss on record. Quite seismic, but this is not just equity market losses we're seeing. We saw significant falls in the likes of oil. We saw cross-asset movement here, money moving into bonds. Brent Schutte still with us, Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management. And, of course, as I was saying, you manage money for the retail investor. How much is the retail investor going to be ner unnerved by this, Brent? How much could the Robin Hood trader, the so-called Robin Hood trader, come out of the market? What sort of pressure does that lead to? Well, I'm hopeful that the, the clients that are ours have uh, advisors who have led them through this without any of those panic selling episodes that you just mentioned. Uh, and so I, I, I'm not for sure on our side of the equation, but I guess kind of taking your question and maybe turning it just a touch because it is more of a retail sentiment. Um, I, I do think this period is like 1999. And I mm. think I've mentioned that on your show before, uh, but you just mentioned Robin Hood. And think about the impact that possibly some of those people have had on the markets. If I take you back to 1999, that was when self-directed brokers and the day traders became popular right towards the end of that. And so I think there are so many different similarities between now and 99. You had a narrow group of stocks leading the market higher on the belief that they were changing the way we live forever, which, you know, perversely probably actually did come true in the coming years, but those stocks had already discounted that. And I think today you're seeing the same thing happen in markets. And what I think happened next will probably be just like it was back then, where more value things uh, outperformed, where more economically sensitive things outperformed, uh, largely because yeah. they were beaten down and pretty much left in the rubble, which I think is what we're talking about again today. And so yeah. um, I, I guess the, the retail consumer to me isn't necessarily, that I talk to at least, concerned about the market, right. but they were more smitten with some of those technology stocks. That was something that we were seeing more hmm. where people wanted to own more of those uh, because they had done so well. Brent, uh, there's been a lot of statistical evidence as well as anecdotal evidence that there is a lot of cash on that uh, proverbial sideline, particularly among some of the larger uh, uh, funds and institutional investors. What brings that cash off the sidelines? You know, I, I think I still think it's a buy the dip. And, and so you do have a lot of people who have fought this thing the whole way. I know there's this belief that everybody's been bullish, but that has not been the case. Uh, at least it wasn't in the beginning. And I think you have a lot of people chasing and a lot of money sitting on the sidelines that needs an entry point for returns. And so, you know, the one way this is probably different than 1999 uh, is that bonds offer very little in the way of returns, mm. and capital has to go somewhere. Yeah. And so I, I do think that at the end of the day, people will be inclined to buy stocks as long as bonds remain at their lower levels. The Fed continues to promise that they will keep them there and continue to do everything possible they can to keep both the market, I'm sorry, the economy first, and now the Fed, I believe, targets the market. And so I do think some of that money will be coming off the sidelines. It's just a question of when. And perhaps, I don't know if that starts tomorrow or the next few days, but as value gets better, especially relative to bonds, I do think you're going to bring in money.